I was 13 years old. We were living right outside of D.C., 10 miles from Dulles Airport in Centerville, Virginia. And my dad, he had cancer and passed away. My mom was from Anderson, and that's how we ended up here. Playing at Hannah. Playing at Hannah. When I look back at all the years I played football, it doesn't matter if it's second grade or the last game, they're all important. But Hannah was, that was where Coach Frazier was an outstanding coach. He had outstanding coaches. That's where I received the discipline that I needed at that time in my life. We went undefeated as a JV team. And then I call it the glory days of T.L. Hannah football, the 74, 75, 76 jackets. We won the region all, all three years. Radio was really already in place, but I considered a combination of my 10th grade year, the 74 season, and the 76 season. Your relationship with Georgia began how? They started recruiting me in the 10th grade. Frank Emmon was the recruiting coordinator, and I'd see him at practice. He, he actually um, was there initially to recruit a quarterback that we, we had on the team by the name of Dean Swain. And then in the process, he noticed me, and it just kept coming. That was the 76 season when Georgia just beat Alabama for the SEC championship. And I got to meet the coaches. I love the style of the junkyard dog defense that Eric Russell presented. I knew early on if I was gonna get an offer to go to Georgia, I was going. Both Vince Dooley and Coach Frazier, former Marines, discipline and hard work, it gives you the intangibles that you need to be successful in life. Well, I ended up with the number 41. It wasn't something that I thought about a lot. It was like, it's your freshman year, what number you want? It wasn't from a coach, it was just from an equipment manager. And I said, well, do you have number 41? And he said, yeah, I got that. And he said, well, I want that number. And the reason why is because one of my best friends in high school, uh, Neil Ivester, that's the number he wore. And I just felt like, it uh, gave me some extra luck. And here we are, 41 years later, national championship. So that might be the difference. Looking back on that season, what game stands out to you, Pat, as being one you'll never forget? The first game of the season was in Knoxville, playing Tennessee. We're down 15 to nothing. Herschel comes in in the second quarter, and of course, he does his thing. Now we're winning 16 to 15. Tennessee has the ball first and goal on the two yard line and they fumbled and I recovered it at one, which is to this day still the greatest fumble recovery in the history of Georgia football. If we had lost that game, I would think uh, Dan Marino and Pittsburgh would have been playing Notre Dame. Playing Notre Dame, you know, at the time the average lineman was Offensive lineman was like 6'4", 6'5", 240, 260. And they were light years. They're like almost as big as they are now. 6'6", 6'8", 280, 300. And they were a very physical football team. We knew we had a challenge. It was a game similar to the current Georgia-Alabama game where defense had to keep playing and keep the other team from scoring. People can sit there all week and watch ESPN and all the experts are going on Facebook and hear one opinion after another and, and after thinking about it, it, it can't, I had to go all the way back to high school because I remember radio would always say, you gotta, you gotta get after that quarterback. And that's what I thought too. I said the team that puts the most pressure on the quarterback is going to win the game. And that's what Georgia did and, and they aimed it, took it a step further. And my prediction is I thought they would blitz from the outside. And they did um, about eight times in that game. And that was something they haven't done all season. I can remember Coach Russell keep yelling out, one more time, just one more time, meaning we had to go out on the field and stop Notre Dame. We won a national championship by completing only one pass and it came at the perfect time late in the game 
and got us the first down and we were able to run the clock out. But we won 17 to 10 in a game that it was just a dog fight throughout the whole game. And then to see the final seconds tick off the clock and you knew that you were the only team left in the country undefeated and you were national champs, was, uh, it was an incredible experience. You still meet with guys on a regular basis that you played with 40 years ago. Oh yeah, we've had 10 year reunion, 20 year reunion, 25, 30, 35, 40, but we had to postpone it to the 41st year, you know, in honor of me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> We have a text chain of all the seniors. There's not a day hardly goes by I don't hear from one of them. Um, once a, a year, usually in the spring or summer, the seniors would meet. And you got a special place in your heart for now two national championships that you've been a part of, one directly and one indirectly. That's correct.